before we get started, I have been out all afternoon and I really need to have some kind of a snack. So I'm making some hot cocoa and I'll show you uh, how I make it. Super simple hot cocoa recipe with some honey. I put a, a little bit of salt in, a teeny, teeny bit of vanilla and about a tablespoon and a half of cacao powder. Or if you've got you know traditional cocoa, you can use that too. And then I like to put in like a tablespoon of, of honey. And this is my beekeeping mentor's honey. I, because I didn't have any to harvest last year. And yes, this is a mug that has a chicken that's covered in bees. And I found it on Etsy and it just arrived last week. So it's now my new favorite mug of the moment. I was fortunate to have a day to myself today and I decided to use it to plan out my garden because I will start seedlings next week. And I also went to some vintage shops that I had never visited before that I was always kind of curious about. And while I was there, I discovered this, what is described as a multi-tool. Uh, that's all it says. But I recognize this as a hive tool and it's really great and rusty and it has all little honeycomb symbols in it. And quick addendum, I just showed the tool to my husband and he says it's not a hive tool. He says that it's some kind of a wrench, but I could use it as a hive tool if I want. I'm not sure if I should keep it rusty and just kind of use it maybe in some sketching for, for the shapes in here, or if I should have my husband, because he's a machinist, have him remove the rust and then we can kind of paint this a fun color and I could even paint some really cool designs on it. So let me know what you think. I, I have a few pieces of like vintage beekeeping equipment and one, my smoker, is actually from an antique shop and I use it and it's, you know, definitely getting wear and tear on it, but it works so much better than the, the more modern smoker, at least the modern smoker that I had used prior. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think if I should keep it as is or make it a little bit more modern and I'll definitely be using it in some capacity um, not in the hives but you know like I said with some sketching and as decoration of course too and although it's not beekeeping related I I'll share this other little collection that I have and while I was at the vintage shops I found some bird houses slash bird feeders and when we first moved into our house and I'll, I'll show you which one it was. There was a, a birdhouse that was left on the back deck and, you know, didn't think much of it. I just, you know, moved it um, to the porch, I think, over which is where I am now. And I figured it would just be decoration and it's just a little artifact that the last owners left behind. And then I was at a, a vintage shop in town a few months after we moved here and I found another birdhouse that had the similar style. And I'm like, oh, that'll be nice. I'll just get it a friend and it'll have a little, uh, it'll we'll have a pair of birdhouses for decorations. Then I was at another vintage shop, maybe a year or two later, and I found another one. And today I found three. I found three and they're, they were all priced more than I have ever paid for any of these birdhouses. And I, I, am, I don't really see myself as someone who collects many things. And I think this is like the only thing other than, you know, some, you know, some spare, you know, beekeeping equipment, you know, and things like that, like the, the cool hive tool. Uh, this, this is a, this is a collection. So I'll show you each piece. The first one is a grocery store. So cute really detailed. I have no idea who creates these. So this is actually a bird feeder. So none of the ones I've owned before have been a bird feeder. They've all been bird houses and it just has really cute detailing on it. And I guess it might be a good idea to use them, but I've just been using them as decorations. Then there's also a gas station. I mean, really cute. And what I really like is this fading, semi-fading, no smoking sign on the side, you know, but really, really thoughtful details. 
that make each of them so unique. And there's no marking on it of who creates these. So the other, the third one that I got today, let's see, probably my favorite <laughs> is the Feed and Seed Birdhouse. I mean, look how cute. It has this little shovel and all the different seeds that they're selling. Of course, seed season, so they're top of mind. But it has an ax too. I mean, really, really cute. And yeah, and then some more. And some more on this side, but yeah. I think I have a problem. So here, here are the other ones that I that I have as well. Yeah, this is the one that was actually. Oh, and it's. I think we actually repaired this once before, but it's falling apart. This one's the one that was on the back deck when we moved in. So I'm not entirely sure what it is. I kind of had has this like nautical vibe to it, but a lot of the stuff's faded, and this almost looks like a wheelbarrow to this thing on the front. But I don't. I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, because whatever was written up here has faded off and any other details are lost. And then this is a little golf course one, a little pro shop, excuse the spider webs. I usually leave them there and every year a spider likes to make a home in this one too. And then I have several general stores, but if these look familiar to anybody, if you know who makes these, please let me know. I, I don't know if these are like entirely unique you know, like if, if there's like, as this is another general store, so now I think I have three or four different general stores. Um, I, I'd like to know if, you know, are there like a hundred of these mass produced or are these totally unique birdhouses? Little, little fire station, but they do, see like here, I keep them on a screened porch. I'll have to repair this. I'll just leave this down here so I don't lose it. But I keep them on a screen porch and all the stuff still happens to it where they kind of fall apart. And I think it's, you know, the sun is on it. I don't, I guess they're really not intended to be real bird ho bird houses. This is a cute little school, with a little school bell. I mean, really, really unique. I know I've said that probably 20 times, but they are. We'll seesaw. And excuse all the porch and deck mess. We're still in the process of getting our decks redone. So all my plants are everywhere and the porch is just in disarray. A cute little barber shop. And of course I love these old style barber shop signs, which we are fortunate to have one in our little town here in Pittsburgh. I love the barber shop signs. So this one is multi-level, <laughs> like truly built on on stilts there just as if it was going to be at the beach um yeah this is the last one that i have do i have a problem collecting birdhouses i'm not sure at what point at how many birdhouses would i need for it to be a problem <laughs> that is the question and i'm not sure what the answer is to it i haven't finished sketching out my garden. I am doing it completely hand-drawn this year and I'm also doing it in color and that's a lot more detailed than I've been in the past where I kind of just draw blocks and have a general idea of where things are going but I have a lot more seeds that I want to try and I also have the high tunnel space which I have not even started at all planning yet so I really want to get my in-ground garden planned out. Then I'm going to focus on what I'll grow out in the high tunnel. And then I'm also going to be adding some more raised beds to our front yard near the pond where I have our garlic growing right now. So not in the pond, but near the pond, <laughs> the garlic. I would love to learn if uh, there's anything, any tools you use in your garden planning, if you do the same thing every year, if you mix it up. I have been practicing Rotate, rotating uh, the plants around the garden. I'm also making an effort right now, because it's January, so that where I am going to plant the tomatoes, I'm making sure I'm composting over there with eggshells, crushed eggshells from our chickens. So that way it'll have time to break down. And by the time the tomatoes will need to access calcium in June, hopefully, that nutrient will be in there. So what I learned in the past year 
is that tomatoes will suffer blossom end rot if they're deficient in calcium. And I want to avoid that. I actually didn't have that problem at all in the garden, so I probably don't even need to, to take this effort, but it's just as a, as a just-in-case uh, method. But what I had experienced on my container gardens, where I grew the tomatoes on my deck last year, that I noticed the first two or three weeks that I had the tomatoes were flowering and producing fruit, that they had blossom end rot. And what I'm going to be doing um, next month when I start to prepare the containers is I'm going to put the crushed eggshells egg in there and then cover with compost. So that way everything will be there that they need and hopefully that'll prevent it too. Now that I have a better idea of where things are going in the garden, at least my, my sketch is almost done, then what I can do now is I can plant like radishes and some more carrots in the spaces where I know I'm going to have melon and tomatoes and and practice more of that thoughtful rotation so that you go from roots to fruit. If you have any tips for rotating uh, plants in your garden, please let me know. And if you're new to following, I post new videos every Sunday, Monday, and Friday all about uh, chemical-free beekeeping, organic gardening, permaculture, uh, every once in a while, some vintage beekeeping tools and apparently some birdhouses as well. Um, but uh, thanks for watching.